What's up, YouTubers? Dave Altizer here. One ring to rule them all, one ring to bind them. This is the one ring of cameras, the A7R Mark III. So I have a lot of people that ask me, which camera should I buy? And gosh, there's just so many options these days, and you already know this. But the Sony A7R III is a really fascinating camera. It may be the perfect hybrid photo video camera because it's giving you such high quality for both photo and video, which is something that I'm looking for as a daily carry camera for YouTube. I'm currently a full on Canon person. I'm shooting this video on my Canon 80D and I shoot my very professional fancy pants stuff on the Canon 1DC. But since all of that, in my professional world as a DP and a director, and now a YouTuber, things have changed. I'm needing things that I've never needed before, like a screen that flips out, or reliable autofocus, 4K that is manageable and not necessarily super big file sizes. Enter the A7R Mark III. Kinotika is a company that I work for and they purchased this camera for that channel. And so I'm not gonna dive deep on the photo specs. I'm not gonna do a deep dive into the video specs. I'm gonna save all of that for the Kinotika review, which will be coming out later this week. So make sure to subscribe to Kinotika to see that. This video is purely for the YouTubers out there, the vloggers, the self filmers, review people, tutorial people, the people who put cameras on tripods, have a simple three point lighting system and just shoot stuff all day, every day. The menu system still sucks. It's still the same menu system they're used to, but here's the big kicker. Here's the kicker, the my menu section. You have unlimited amounts of menus that you can create that are fully customizable. You can add everything that you want in the order that you want, in the pages that you want. So guess what? I don't even need to go into Sony's menu system anymore. I've created four profiles here, everything that I ever need, all the video stuff, picture profiles, codecs, uh, steady shot, format, peaking settings, all the things that I use all the time, all the things that I'm always searching for that are in all these random spots, you now can completely customize your menu system. That again is a huge, 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 huge upgrade. You have to know what you're doing when you're building a color profile because the built-in ones that Sony includes in the picture profiles are garbage. They all look like trash. The S-Log is not powerful enough to hold up with the 8-bit codec. And even the ones that are built in that are a little bit more baked in, they clip in the highlights. It's just, they look awful. And that's just a, that's a really well-known thing about Sony cameras. And that's one of the reasons why people choose Canon or Fuji over Sony. It's because the built-in profiles just look so much more natural. I'm shooting this video on the ADD in the faithful picture profile and there's no color correction on this image. This is just how it looks straight out of the camera. But here's the secret sauce. I have found the perfect profile. It is sold by a guy named Andrew Reed on EOS HD. And as soon as I started testing this profile, I fell in love with it. The colors just look so natural. And if anything, they look better than what I'm used to on Canon. The dynamic range is just beautiful. You get such amazing highlight roll off. You get great shadow detail and the colors look natural. The reds look red, the blues look blue, the greens are correct. These are all things that are always off on Sony cameras. So obviously you can see here on my setup, I have the small HD focus monitor, which is my favorite monitor right now. It has this amazing accelerometer built into it. So it'll automatically flip when you flip the screen back and forth like so. This monitor is super lightweight. I, can, I can't really tell you guys how lightweight this thing is. I also have the Video Micro uh, Rode shotgun mic. The monitor with the battery and the mic weighs 15 ounces. So as a reference, the Gorillapod SLR um, weighs 15 ounces. This camera has everything that you want. It's got a headphone jack. It's got a you know, micro HDMI port, which isn't the best, but nice mic input, fairly good preamps in here. 
But the one thing that's really fascinating is it's got two USB ports. It's got a USB-C port and then a typical like micro USB port. What's cool about that is you can actually charge the device while also using the USB for some sort of interface, whether you're using it for a trigger or you're plugging it into your computer and you're tethering it or something. So it's cool that they've done that. They've given you options. And for me as a new generation MacBook Pro user, having a built-in USB-C port is pretty cool because I don't need that SD card slot anymore. I can just plug straight into the USB-C here and plug it into my computer. The first thing that I noticed as soon as I picked this up is the handling on this thing is so much better. The buttons, its I can't describe it on camera here, but the buttons feel so much better. They just have a, a really good throw to them. They've got a, like a bounce to them that I'm feeling. It really reminds me of Canon, and I think that was one of the biggest downsides of the Sony line is they just felt plasticky and they felt really cheap. This doesn't feel cheap anymore. You've got some great magnesium uh, outer sides here. The rubber just feels solid. This little door that flips open for the dual SD card slot is just rock solid. It just feels great. Go to a camera store, feel the shutter button, feel the record button back here. Just hold it and see what you think because I really, really like this. So I always take all my pictures, all my thumbnails uh, as a photo instead of just pulling from the video. So I need a good photo feature built into the camera as well. You know, it doesn't have to be mind-blowingly good like this camera is, but I need to have it nonetheless which kind of rules out like a C200 or a C100 or cameras that are dedicated video cameras for a YouTuber isn't the best. I actually do need photo capability. I'm shooting full frame 4K right now. And this is picture profile one. This is the standard EOS color, uh, pro color profile. This is the one that I typically like, the XR. I do notice that it's a little bit more warm. Um, it is just an auto white balance, so that probably has a lot to do with it. So, and this is the uh, the skin tone one, the warm profile. Again, full frame, and then can I do it while recording? No, I can't. Now this is Super 35, so you can hopefully see a little bit of a difference in quality. Hopefully not, actually. Hopefully you don't see a difference in quality. So what's the most important thing when it comes to making YouTube content? Speed. You have to be fast at YouTube or you're just not going to win at the game of YouTube. So one thing that I love about this camera that is not on anything that I've ever found other than a pro and cinema camera is recording proxies in camera. This might not sound like a huge deal, but I edit on a $1,200 MacBook Pro 13 inch. I would rather spend my money on a better camera than spending it on a $4,000, $3,000 Mac. My biggest downfall on that computer isn't editing. It edits fine. In fact, with Final Cut 10, because it's going all just on the CPU and it's optimized for the machine, Final Cut tends to run really well when I'm editing even 4K files. But where it really starts to suffer is when I'm transcoding or when I'm creating ProRes files, when I'm exporting. If I'm working all in proxy from the start and I don't have to transcode everything to proxy on the front end, I could just start working and then as soon as I hit export, just link it back to the original files and just go grab a coffee or eat a quick bite to eat as that exports. I do wish that this camera was able to shoot 60 frames at 4K. That would be great. I do think that a new camera is on the horizon. The A7S Mark III is probably going to be coming soon. And chances are, because it's more of a video camera, it may have some better video functions like 60 frames per second, maybe even a better internal recording mode. I don't know, we'll see. I weighed the 1DC uh, on the scale, and guess what? The body of just the 1DC, just the body with a battery, weighs the exact same as this. A nice wide angle lens, this is roughly the same weight as the Sony 10-18. to um, If you got the 16-35 to f4 lens, that lens is also really lightweight. But 
Regardless, even if it's a little bit more with a nicer lens on here, the fact that this with the monitor and the mic and the lens weighs essentially the exact same as just the body of this, that should tell you a lot. You can vlog with this. It's not ridiculous. It's not like totally absurd to carry this around. This camera is really lightweight. And what does this have that this doesn't have? Well, this has both 4K in full frame and Super 35. The 4K in this is a crop. It's a 1.3X and it also shoots in this atrocious motion JPEG codec that is just a dog to edit with. The 1DX also does the same. This has a nice, easy to play codec. It's a nice Sony XAVC codec with the uh, 4K, but you can also do a really compressed, easy to use proxy file. I'm really loving everything about this camera and shoot, dang it, I'm gonna have to get one. <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a long one and I rambled a lot, but I hope that you got a lot out of it. I'm trying to just get my thoughts out about this camera. I'm looking forward to using it going out in the field, putting an actual Sony lens on it. Anything that you want me to test, anything that you want to see me do with this camera, please put it in the comments. This is a brand new camera. We're doing this together. This is a community of people, a community of filmmakers figuring out if this is a good camera. So please let me know what you think. Ask me any questions that you have. I'll try my best to do anything that you guys want, any tests, anything that you want to see. I'm going to be doing a rolling shutter test. I'm going to be doing a sharpness test. Um, and I'll be playing around with the picture profiles a little bit more, but anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this. See you next time.